Tom Ross and uh, the Tonight Show, the topic, if you want to watch it on uh, YouTube, and a lot of great reflections on some truly incredible artists. Halftime Howie Show pays tribute to music legends. And before Rocco Pasofumi does his movie review, he wants to reflect on another legend that passed away in the last week or so. Uh, and I still love them. I love listening to their songs. Truly brilliant artists. Uh, the passing of Robin Gibb. Rocco, talk, talk a little about Robin Gibb. Um, the thing about Robin Gibb that's very interesting is um, despite the fact that most people know the Bee Gees through the disco music and through Barry Gibb's um, falsetto voice, um, Robin Gibb actually did a lot of the early singing of the Bee Gees when um, they were big in the 60s. They did song when they did songs like I Started a Joke, New York Mining Disaster, uh, To Love Somebody and all that. So, And also he has, actually sang on one of my favorite singles of the Bee Gees um, when they started doing the disco thing. Uh, uh, Nights on Broadway, which I think is one of the most uh, underrated songs. Um, I think regarding the Bee Gees, I think the whole thing regarding the group, it, it's, they made really excellent music. I mean, even though a lot of people pigeonhole them as a disco group, they really set the tone for um, you know, white performers doing R&B music. And the other aspect about the Bee Gees is, is just how tragic the deaths were from Andy Gibb in 1988, from uh, cocaine field heart um, disorder, and um, the, the twins, um, Morris dying first a couple years ago, and now Robin, and now that the oldest one, uh, Barry, is the only surviving member, it, it's just it's just a tragic thing, but for, I mean, but I think the silver lining of it all is that we have the music still, and the music will last no matter what. All right, great, uh, great reflection, another great musician, uh, another great uh, performer. performer, or host of a, of a Truly a music legend, Don Cornelius of Soul Train. And uh, when I think of Don Cornelius of Soul Train, I think of that big afro. And it just brings to mind another, uh, not, a, not a musician, but an actor that passed away. Just thinking about that big afro, remember back, Welcome Back, Connor? Yeah. Uh, Juan Epstein, uh, Robert Hedges passed away this year as well. So not a musician, but uh, certainly a memorable character from uh, Welcome Back, Connor. But right, uh, right, right. Oh, I just wanted to touch on Don Cornelius really quickly. I thought his death was, tra was a real tragedy. Like, the fact that he killed himself is just, uh, it just it's truly heartbreaking when you hear about anybody killing themselves. But um, I thought Don Cornelius was fantastic. I got to actually, um, being, you know, growing up in the 80s and the 90s, um, I got to see Soul Train. I thought Soul Train was fantastic. And it actually lasted a lot, um, like, like, longer into the more, um, modern internet age versus shows like American Bandstand and but um, but I, I thought Don Cornelius really played a, uh, as much of a role in shaping you know music on television as much as Dick Clark. Excellent. All right we'll leave that into uh, Rocco's uh, movie review. We're keeping Rocco busy tonight. R Rocco what do you got uh, for us on the weekly Rocco Pasafume movie review? Thank you very much. The movie I picked this week is Battleship. It's directed by Peter Berg. It's based on the board game, of course. Um, it stars Taylor Kitsch, Liam Neeson, Alexander Skarsgård, Brooklyn Decker, and Rihanna as naval officers on an assorted fleet of ships that battle an armado of what turns out to be an alien invaders trying to conquer Earth. While a film based on a board game may have one instantly thinking dud, Battleship does have some merits. It's less flat on characters than Independence Day and less obnoxious and lowest common denominator than the Transformers films. The acting is also ranges from good, from Liam Neeson and Alexander Skarsgård, to serviceable from model background actors like Taylor Kitsch and Brooklyn Decker and pop star Rihanna who makes her acting debut in this film. However, while the film is entertaining, has great special effects, and even is a bit amusing if you come into it with the lowest expectations, Battleship suffers from cheesy dialogue and a plot, despite all the cool naval versus alien battle scenes, that is too formulaic to be distinct. If you like your action flick dumb but fun, then Battleship will mostly not disappoint. If you seek something more substantial, you're better off seeing The Dictator, which I also had an opportunity to see, despite... Sasha Baron Cohen's return to uh, star starring roles in a scripted film. It is definitely not only clever, but hilarious. However, I give Battleship two out of five stars. Okay. All right, great job, Rocco. Um, Steve McCarroll, you have a very, very intense.
10 segment coming up next week. And folks, next week, we're going to be in the studio. You can call in. So anyone in Long Beach has some big events or something you want to share with us, next week is your week where you can call in uh, 8 to 9 next Tuesday, 631-888-8811. Uh, we're excited to be uh, in the studio next week. And a couple of big announcements. This Thursday marks the debut column. Yours truly, Halftime Howie, is going to be writing a weekly column in the Long Beach Herald, focusing on Long Beach and all the uh, great things that are happening on this show and our great, uh, passionate crew. So that uh, is happening. You can pick up the uh, Long Beach Herald this Thursday. Thank you to uh, Anthony Riffolato from the, uh, the Herald for giving me this uh, great opportunity. And I really think it's going to take our show to a new level, having that weekly exposure in the uh, Long Beach Herald. And we got a call from the... Uh, the uh, the uh, City of Long Beach and the um, Landmark Association asked me to be the host of Long Beach's uh, 90th birthday celebration. Very honored to do that. That's going to be Sunday, um, June 3rd at Kennedy Plaza from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's going to be a great day. And I asked Benoit to bring uh, Jack Plunkett. Uh, he's the 11 year old who rocked our socks off with his song Imagine. and. I think all the people that day at Kennedy Plaza, Benoit, are going to get a thrill seeing uh, you and 11-year-old uh, Jack Plunkett sing Imagine. I can't wait. And by the way, tonight is the American Idol battle off between, what a great name, Philip Phillips and uh, Jessica Sanchez. So uh, who knows who's going to win, but I am so pumped to see this 11-year-old sing in front of all those people on June 3rd at Kennedy Plaza. Yeah, you know, I, I just taught uh, a lesson to Jack today. We work together, and uh, we've been just doing a lot of uh, blues, actually. And here's that he turned 12 the day after he performed John Lennon's Imagine last show. And uh, he's just a great kid, and, and I'm really proud of him. We, we actually rehearsed Imagine today, and we also, you know, we, we, we play blues. And the, the kids learn, you know, like blues now. You know, it took me a while to, to play uh, blues in all 12 keys, and he's got like four or five down. Uh, I don't know how sad he is right now or suffering, but I'm trying to instill my suffering and sadness in <laughs> his vocal technique. All right, that's awesome. And uh, Steve, uh, give people a preview of what you're going to be touching on next week, because I know it hits home to you personally, and I, I think it's going to be a very moving segment next week. Thank you, Harry. Um, I had the privilege of meeting a woman named uh, Linda Rossi, and I know how you met her last year in an outing. And uh, Ms. Rossi and her husband, Mario, uh, lost their daughter, Chrissy, um, five or six years ago uh, to suicide. She was a young uh, adult, 26. She had the whole world in front of her. And there were a lot of signs that were, um, had gone unnoticed, unfortunately, in the Rossi family that rocked their world. So when I hear we talk about uh, Don Cornelius and, you know, recently Junior Seau, um, it really hits home when you sit down and have lunch with someone that actually had a personal tragedy. So when I had, when I met with her the other day, it really was one of those um, times where you reflect in your own life and kind of made me self-reflect um, because I had dealt with suicide um, in my family. So the conversations that we had, and it actually inspired me to do what I do um, to help others out there. But Ms. Rossi and her family have moved on. They are forming um, such an alliance with so many communities and so many people out there to <coughs> combat mental illness and to do research for Brain and Behavior Research Foundation. They have a special event on Friday, July 13th at the Rock Hill Golf and Country Club, um, which they do an annual uh, golf outing. And their, their message is so powerful that it will bring you to tears to hear the, the, the personal tragedy and challenges that they have gone through. And unless you know, and to talk about suicide, some people sleep under the carpet, some people don't want to talk about it, but I think what Ms. Rossi and her family and her husband Mario have done is to bring this out in the open, is to talk about it, to go to schools, to go to agencies, to come on the Halftime Howie Show and to talk about the trials and tribulations of what suicide can do to a family and what research is needed, those funds that are significantly needed to help um, people that are struggling with depression. We talked about it on this on the show for bullying. We just heard different things that uh, people out there at younger ages due to social media or Facebook are committing suicide. 11, 10, 12, 13 year old kids. Um, 
this hasn't happened quite like this. It's an epidemic. And I think what Ms. Rossi and her family are doing is extremely noteworthy. So next week's segment uh, in Babylon at the studios is so very, very important. And obviously it touches my heart uh, to the core. So um, I hope there's listeners out there that can really um, benefit from this. Feel free to call in. And we can talk about my pra uh, program chapters, which also offers support through counseling and uh, supports that are out there. But you'll be really uh, taken back by the words of uh, Miss Rossi and talking about her daughter and her family. Thank you. Yes, uh, that's going to be quite moving. I just want to send my condolences to the, uh, the, the Sheridan family here in Long Beach. A uh, young man by the name of Patrick Sheridan uh, recently passed away. Uh, he was a, um, a pilot. Uh, that was his, um, his lifelong dream, and he loved flying airplanes, but tragically, uh, his plane crashed last week, and there was a huge uh, funeral here at St. Ignatius, and uh, his friends remembered a person that just loved to fly and loved life and was a great son to his family and uh, was remembered by uh, hundreds of people very warmly here in the uh, Long Beach area, so our sincere condolences to uh, the family of Patrick Sheridan. It's so tragic when a young man loses his life, only 34 years old, but uh, he certainly, um, you know, from everything we read in the Herald, certainly left a legacy, and uh, he'll be remembered warmly by all his friends here in the Long Beach area. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, ben, why you got some more music coming up for us? That's right. Dave Weintraub is playing an original song called Waste. All right, and uh, Dan McDermott is coming up to talk about the hapless New York Yankees who can't score a run and can't win a game. Let's see what Dan has to say about the high-priced flop. New York Yankees, after the break. My name is Halftime, and after the break, the New York Yankees yeah. Flopperoo. Yeah. Long Island's first and oldest station, 1240 AM, WGBB. 